comic book friends and fiends, it's Rob here in front of the Great Wall of Comics. I went to Fan Expo in San Francisco, and I may have picked up a few things. Alright, so, I got a stack. Uh, I went to Fan Expo, and I had... A a pretty darn good time. Now, it was a much smaller con setup than I had expected uh, for a big city like San Francisco. Uh, not necessarily a, t a plethora of comic book vendors, but enough. Some that had some really good pricing, and some that had what you expect from con pricing, where the guys really, really love their comic books and really probably just want to move them from one city to the next to show them off and not actually sell any of them. Um, anyways, bunch of books. Let's go through some of what we picked up. Uh, now, usually when I go to cons, one of the first things I'm keen on is getting signatures. There was actually a lot of artists there. Um, however, just not a lot that I didn't already have s multiple signatures from where I felt like, oh, I want to get this this person to sign this book or that. Uh, so just a couple. Uh, one of um really and some several of them I was expecting to sign have them sign my Marvel 1000 uh, which has several signatures on it and just keep adding to it uh, that actually never came to fruition uh, the four artists that were there that I was going to add to that book uh, two of them I could never find where their uh, table was and the other two every time I went to their table they weren't there so mm, it didn't happen however first thing I did when I walked in the door, uh, when I was scouting out the artist alley, I found Pat Broderick. And Pat Broderick, I had brought a book for. He did 100% of the art in this book, the pencil and the inks, and did the cover. And that is Doom 2099. I love my 2099. I There you go. Pat Broderick uh, signed it for me beautifully he had the silver ink to go with it which is just brilliant it was much better than the black sharpie i had uh and uh he was just tickled pink you know because he told me he was telling me how much he really enjoyed this character and getting to do a character like doom uh on a book and you know doesn't see a lot of these i mean people don't there's not the love for 2099 that I have universally. And so I told him the whole story about how I really got into 2099 and how I really dig the book and all this stuff. And we were chatting for a little bit. Next thing I know, he's pulling out a bunch of, um, he pulls out a bunch of pieces of uh, drawings. And he's like, oh, dude, here, I don't normally give these away. He says, but you got me in a good mood to kick off the con. So he, he, sh he gave me some of these. Uh, these are, uh, you know, prints of some pencil drawings and stuff, ink drawings that he did. Uh, so you got Captain America. Um, there's a Stra Doctor Strange. And there's another Doctor Strange. So he gave me like three of each of these things and I've kind of put them together into these boards with um, a two pack uh, so I got like four of them and we're going to do uh, I'm probably going to I'm going to give these away at some point uh, maybe with a thousand subscriber giveaway maybe with something else um, which by the way if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet please consider it we're on that march to a thousand subscribers when we get there we're going to be uh, giving away a ton of slabs uh, plus of course we'll be turning on the channel monetization all the monetization is going to go to comics curing cancer so your subscription costs you nothing but you'll be doing good in this world and helping us to fight cancer anyway so uh so it was really nice of him he you know he sells these like five ten bucks a piece and he just gave me a bunch of them because he was so excited uh i got him in a really good mood just being excited about his work and talking about that so anyways that was the first thing i did in the floor um, I guess I told this story a little bit out of order because I really should have started with the before the floor. Um, 
so before the floor, when you walk right into the facility, there's the place where they're selling all the exclusives uh, for the con exclusives. Fan Expo has their own exclusives anyways. So I uh, went there and I wanted to pick up this book here. They had these uh, Batman 251 facsimiles uh, that were that says specifically says look out san francisco the joker is back in town now my guess is they probably make because it was limited to 500 of these my guess is they probably have look out san francisco the joker's back in town look out toronto and all the fan expo cities i'm sure whatever cool thing is it's my sort of local town um so i grabbed two of these and i was super excited because i figured i'd get one for me and one for the giveaway pile um, and then as I was pulling these out of the bin, I realized that this one has two copies in the single poly bag. So I got two for the price of one on this one due to a, a, a bagging error or whatever. It was great. Uh, and I see that it was printed in Canada. Therefore, the message was clear. And then I'm supposed to, when I, t I'm supposed to open this up and keep one for myself and send the other to Chris the comic vet uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do uh, and then we'll still take this one and we'll throw it in the giveaway bin uh, on uh, the old only slabs all right uh, next up now several several of these are older books that you can actually get at fan expo uh, if you go to fanexpo.com slash shop I think it is something that or you know whatever to so their shop link on the fan expo uh, you can get many of these books uh, available online there and if you don't have a fan expo going near you. Uh, those 251 facsimiles, those were specific to uh, the con only and you couldn't get them online. But these other ones you can get online. Uh, so this is an older book, uh, Batman Adventures 12. This is a Bruce Tim cover. Um, the line art drawing, love Bruce Tim stuff. So you know I'm going to pick that up. Um, picked up uh, a st an older uh, Star Wars number one Fan Expo edition. Mandalorian number one. We got the uh, Virgin variant. Uh, I think this is a Tyler Kirkham. Maybe. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, Fan, Fan Expo Fantastic Four number one with an homage cover to the original uh, or the f first appearance of Doom. Oh, is that? F uh, Detective Comics 27 facsimile. Uh, Virgin variant. comes as a little two-pack essentially uh, an action comics one facsimile Superman lifting the car in front of Superman lifting the car uh, sensational comics one facsimile it's one of those things I don't see a lot I don't see a lot there hasn't really been enough like really a official release of that that other than some of these like con expo things I think um, here's Batman 1 facsimile. Uh, so I don't know how well it's showing up. It looks okay on my camera, on my screen, but Batman's got a bat hanging from his arm. So if this is a, a Del, uh, a Del Auto, I think. Um, not sure. Can't read. But anyways, this is a really great looking Batman number 1 facsimile. Uh, this is a Perillo. This is new this year. Fantastic 452, the first appearance of Black Panther. It's a great Black Panther Perillo cover. And last one of the con, con variants. Uh, this is uh, Batman Harley Quinn. Uh, this is the foil version of the original Alex Ross. Uh, so grab that up. All right. So back into the actual pickup. So we got the signed book we already talked about. Uh, so, you know, I just love those, those kind of weird uh, sp space sci-fi books there. So Space War is one of those weird uh, titles that I dig. Uh, kind of, you know, Charleston, I think it is. Uh, sp space War. Just a... <laughs> it's no use. Our blaster charges don't even slow them up. 
I don't even know what's going on. It's just crazy. But Reedy and the Fire Apes are in here. So they are. <laughs> it's just oddities. Uh, how about... Uh, this is a modern comics reprint. Um, but still, the price on it was basically a throw-in book on a deal. So I'm fine with... I'm happy with it. It's Captain Adam uh, number 83. Yep. And that is the first appearance of the... Uh, Silver Age Blue Beetle, or the new Blue Beetle, whatever, Ted Cord. Anyway, so there you go. Um, hopefully one day we'll pick up our, we'll pick ourselves up the uh, original, but, you know, for now, I don't know if I went the modern comics reprint. Uh, this one, not the com modern comics reprint. This is the, um, the original. Here you go, Captain Atom. This is the origin of Captain Atom. Actually, it's actually Strange Suspense Stories is actually the name of the title. So it's Strange Suspense Stories uh, number 70-something, I think. I can't just even say on the cover. This is absolutely worst if you wanted to try to be doing numbering. Um, anyways, Captain Adam. Uh, this book was a great pickup. I, I've been, this has been a gap in my 300s of my Batmans. It's a book that blew up with the whole I Am Batman uh, stuff that went because it's the features, the first appearance of Tim Fox. Um, this book has been like, it's been over a hundred dollar book repeatedly. Uh, and I did not want to spend that much money for a book that was just needed to fill my run. This copy was available for $20 because the bottom corner here is all mangled up. And that's fine by me. I just wanted it to fill my run. Didn't care about it from any other purpose. Uh, so if I can save 80 something dollars on the book because that little corner, rock on. Uh, I'm a big Batman Beyond guy. Uh, dig, this, dig the series. But somehow I have like all the runs of Batman Beyond except for like the first original six issue run. I've had, I have the first book or at least a promotional copy of it. So I have a variation of the first issue and I have the third issue with the, um, uh, but I don't have the, I hadn't picked up the rest. I was able to pick up a couple more today. So I was able to pick up uh, issue four uh, with Edragon there, which is great. And I was able to pick up issue six, which, of course, is the first appearance of Ink. Now, this is a book that had blown up. I don't know. Speculation had gotten really big for a while. Um, this, the guy had this guy had this tagged at $100, and I looked it up, and I'm like, nah, it ain't a $100 book, buddy. Uh, and so he looked it up on his app, and he, found, he agreed that... It, well, it may have used to have been a hundred dollar book. It definitely wasn't. It was more like in the fifty dollar range. So he came down, uh, which which was great. He was able to. He was willing to cut his price in half to come down to where the actual market was on it. And for that, I will take it up because Ink is a big character in uh, Batman Beyond, and there is talk, of course, speculation standpoint, all can come uh, to fruition with eventually making it into the movies, which should be cool. Now the only big book, really, that's hard to get in my Batman Beyond series I have to get is issue two, which, of course, is the first appearance of um, Terry McGinnis as Batman Beyond. Because in issue one, he is not Batman Beyond. The Batman Beyond costume is being worn by Bruce Wayne in issue one. So issue two is the big is is the big issue for Batman Beyond really. Alright. This book, this is another book I've been looking for for a long time. I really, really, really would like a nine eight. I'll take a nine six. A nine eight copy runs about over four hundred dollars and I could I just could I have difficulties with certain books thinking that, that a book, I, I should spend that kind of money on a book uh, for a newer, more recent book. Um, but this is a book that because of the cover, it's an embossed cover, it's a thick cover. If it takes a ding, it just doesn't press out. So it's really kind of difficult. Um, so I'd be happy with a 9.6 even, which people sell for quite a bit. But I found this copy uh, raw. It's a candidate for a 9.8 candidate all day long. And uh, I was able to get the guy down to $60. Um, 
So I was super happy. And that is the original Gargoyles number one. <laughs> this show is so good. My wife and I loved the heck out of this. So I am pleased as punch to be able to add this to our collection <laughs> on this book. Um, because this is just um, so so much joy for both of us. And, and I, can't, I can't wait um, to get this one graded and see it come back. Because, man. Whew, what a deal! This 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 was a deal. Cause these are usually usually you find these guys they're anywhere from eighty to a hundred dollars raw for or something that's in a VF plus to near mint minus, and this is near mint plus. So uh, I really appreciate the guy working with me on um, the pricing on this book. So it just goes to prove you guys cash is king at the con. People will make deals when you say cash. Um, whether or not they report it to the taxes, I don't know. That's on them. All right, and then uh, I picked up a bunch of little books. Uh, well, not really little books, but they were inexpensive, just kind of basically cover price books um, that I needed uh, because I finally decided to go back and work on a Miles Morales um, pickups, right? Unfortunately, I didn't find any Ultimate Fallout uh, or all, the all-new, all-different first volume, uh, but I did find some from the current run, which is fine. I have a lot of gaps in the current run. Um and oddly enough, at this con, the one, the two titles I said I was going to go look for, I came home with none of. I can't went there thinking I was going to find a couple fillers for my Invaders run. Uh, There's only a couple Invader books there at the con at all, and they were books I already had. Or and in my Mystery in Space, I found one booth that had a huge run of the very early, the Golden Age Mystery in Space books that I needed for my PC. But they were really, really rough, and the dude really, really was partial to those books and wanted to take them home with him. So I let him because I was not his man, his prices. But anyways, so uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, issue number 15 with a preview for Strange Academy. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number 16. Number 17. These are great covers, I gotta admit. Uh, Miles Morales, uh, 18. This is a C cover with, uh, I don't know what this, I don't know what the deal is with this baby in his baby pouch, but whatever. Uh, 19, or now we're starting to see the clone. You know, this is, this is really hard for me. Uh, I do want, I do recognize Miles Morales as Spider-Man. I want, so I wanted to pick these up while I can, while they're inexpensive still, but buying clone books. You guys all, have, if you're if you're with my channel, you know how I feel about spider clones typically. So it's kind of tough when Spider-Man, Miles Morales had his own clone saga. It's like, oh, God. Uh, here's 20. That is a great cover. This cover is amazing. Uh, 21. And let's see, 24. And 28. So that's that run. And then there was one book. I didn't go, like DJ, like the clip from DJ Lynx, if you've seen Remy's thing, I didn't go there looking for a big book. Um, didn't go there with an agenda to pick up any one book in particular, uh, was allowing myself to be, as Bruce Lee would say, like water, be fluid, just adapt to the situation and see what presents itself. Uh, stop by the short box booth, uh, because, uh, you know, been, I've been, done, I've done some, some short box, love short box app as a buying platform. I think it's phenomenal with the way that they're presenting, giving buyers information about, what the market prices are and uh, whether or not a, a, one of the sellers on their platform is selling at over over to market value or at market value or whatever. So they're really empowering buyers on their platform, giving you the knowledge of what's going on with that book. And also they're supplying it to their sellers. So their sellers know that, hey, if you want to try, sell it for over value, you're welcome to do so, but we're going to let everybody know about it type of thing anyways there's a book i've been looking for for a while on my batman run uh but is and that's batman 171 the first appearance of our first silver age appearance of the riddler 
Uh, this book had gone ballistic uh, during the lead up to uh, the Batman uh, when it came out that the Riddler was going to be the primary villain in that particular movie. This book hit all kinds of crazy heights. Um, you know, you usually talk about a book. Um, it's not uncommon uh, with grades and books to be like the lead, the grade kind of leads some things you just see like, oh, it's a 4.0, it's a $400 book. It's a 4.5, it's a $450 book. We see that all the time, uh, or at least I do. Uh, but this was a book that was running at like three to four times that. I mean, you were seeing 4.0s were selling for like $1,200 to $1,500 at the peak. Absolutely insane. Uh, and I was not a buyer in that range. I have, and I still stand firm to this day, I have never spent four figures on a book in my collection, ever. <laughs> uh, not to say that I won't someday, but not while my kids are in college, that's for sure. I like to stay married, eh, whatever, and not without discussion probably. But anyways, my wife did give me permission to get myself something for Christmas from her uh, and for my birthday. So this book was up available on their wall. It was at a price that when we looked it up, it was below the market value uh, for this book. And so went ahead and pulled the trigger and went ahead and add myself a Batman 171. Uh, and it's, it's labeled as first Silver Age appearance of the Riddler. Batman TV plot based on the story. So the original plot for the Batman 66 show based off of this particular story. Very cool. The remarkable ruse of the Riddler. Um, super happy to add that to the PC. Um, the backside carries a more, more of the burden of the, of the wear on the book. Obviously, as you do see on the front cover, we are missing this little corner. Um, I've got some, lines. It's a 4.0. What do you want, guys? Jeez, please. Stop giving me grief. That's my haul. Caught one day. And that's one hell of a stack of books. So, until next time, guys, you collect what you want. Don't listen to anyone. Not even me. I'm just a fat man. <laughs> a fat stack of comics. And a fat opinion. Thanks for watching.